That's, that's a good prayer, isn't it? Order my steps in your word. That's a good prayer. Just want the Lord to lead us and to guide us. We want to give him control of our lives. Can you thank God for this choir, amen, leading us, leading us in worship. Thank God. Thank God for this choir. We do honor the Lord today. We thank God for Jesus and his shed blood on the cross. His blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We are so glad that Jesus went to an old rugged cross. He hung, bled, and died that we might have the right to the tree of life. Didn't have to do it, but he did. Died. The Bible says they put him in a borrowed tomb, but early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone because I know who holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Got up from the grave, went back to his father, and one day he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? That's good news. We thank God for good news today. To all of these preachers who are assembled, to Presiding Elder Moore and to Sister Moore, God bless you. And to all of these preachers who are here, to Mother Williams, God bless you. Uh, to Mother Bird in her absence. And to the First Lady of Greater Bethel, Reverend Gloria Redden. We greet you today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now, I hope, I hope y'all not going to be this quiet while I'm preaching this morning. If you would just help me out just a little bit. Amen. You know, if God is alive, we should act like he is alive. Amen. God is not in the grave. He is yet alive. And we come to worship and to praise his name. If you'll turn with me to the Gospel of St. Matthew, the 14th chapter, and we want to use uh, these two verses as our text. You could use either one, uh, but both of them really take us where we're trying, where I believe the Lord is trying uh, to uh, uh, take us. Uh, St. Matthew 14, 29 and 30. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come and God, we thank you uh, for this, another opportunity to lift up your word. Uh, we pray that you said your word would not return void, but that it would accomplish what you intended to accomplish. So God, we thank you uh, for signs and wonders that shall follow your word. Save, heal, and deliver. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. St. Matthew 14 and 29. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. I want to I wanna preach, teach from the topic today. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Turn and tell your neighbor that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Turn and tell somebody else that. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Come on and tell one more person. Keep your eyes on Jesus. The best advice I believe I can ever give you as your pastor is that you should always no matter what no matter who comes or goes whether life is good or bad or ugly no matter if life is good or bad or ugly for you right now 
with all of your faults and failures and victories, the best advice I can give you today is that you should always keep your eyes on Jesus. There are two stories in the New Testament where we see uh, storms. We see Jesus and we see the disciples and we see storms. Uh, there's the storm that we see in the Gospel of St. Mark, the fourth chapter. And uh, this first story is a storm where the disciples were in the boat with Jesus. I think it's important to point out that storms happen in all of our lives. Storms happen in everyone's life. And if you've never been in a storm, uh, if you would just keep on living, I want you to know that there's a storm that has your name on it. We have to learn that storms are not unique to life. It's not unique that you're in a storm. It's not something out of the ordinary that you are in a storm. But storms are a part of life. And I believe that when we get saved, and I know that the preacher tells us that if you accept the Lord as your savior, uh, that everything is going to be all right. And in that, we, we kind of leave out the part of the story where we don't really always tell you that even though you're saved, you're going to have to go through some kind of storm. No one, and I mean no one, absolutely no one escapes life without going through some kind of a storm. And this morning I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that you are in one of three places. You're getting ready to go into a storm. Life has been pretty smooth lately. Uh, but you're getting ready to go into a storm. Or, number two, you're in a storm right now. Sometimes the reason why we run the church is because we want God to deliver us from a storm that's going on in our lives. Either you're going in a storm or you're in a storm right now. But I also have some good news. Thank God for some of you, you are getting ready to come out of your storm. That, that's the good news. And that's why you should always thank and praise God. And that's why you shouldn't let the devil win that battle. Because no matter what, the storm doesn't last always. And just like you're in the storm or going in the storm, when God gets ready, how many know that God has the power to bring you out of your storm? There are all kinds of storms, and I, I talk about it, I know I talked about it in Bible study, but there are all kinds of storms. Sometimes you'll go through a physical storm or a health storm where your body breaks down and as we get older our body sure enough does break down and some of us know that we walked in here with little aches and pains we walked in here with the doctor telling us we needed to take a pill or we walked in here with the doctor telling us he didn't know what was going on with us and we need to take some tests in order to discover, to find out exactly what's going on in this body. It's, it's a physical, it's a health storm. But not only are there physical storms, there are family storms. And Lord knows if you have a family, you're going to go through some storms in your family life. Those of us who are parents... Know that sometimes our children, the very children that we love and, and sacrifice for, those very children that we raised, will act crazy every now and then. And we'll go through family storms. You can go through a storm in your marriage. You'll go through storms in your family relationships. Don't ever think that just because 
you have aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews. You ain't fooling me. I know there's some of them you ain't talking to. And you ain't talked in a long time. And left up to you, you ain't going to talk. Family storms. But, but not only do we have family storms, but we have financial storms. Where there's too much month for your money. Can I get a witness here? See, like when you get paid, the money just keeps going out. And it seems like it goes out quicker than it comes in. And I can remember when uh, me and Sister Redden were really first uh, uh, getting on our feet. After paying the bills, didn't leave a lot of money left. And you work those 40 hours and, and at the end of that pay, when you get paid and you didn't have any money left, you talking about being disappointed and grouchy and in a bad mood. Because every now and then you'll have a financial storm. Ain't nothing like not having a lot of money and then something on the car breaks down. It's not that you need four tires. You can't afford one tire. Financial storm. You'll go through that every now and then you'll go through some emotional storms but you'll be wounded and and hurt and unforgiving and holding grudges you'll go through emotional storms and again just because you in church this morning doesn't mean that you have forgiven everybody who's done something against you. I know good church folk know how to play church. We know how to come in and raise our hands and sing the hymns out of the hymn book. We know how to do all of that. And we ask you how you're doing, you'll tell us you're, you're blessed and highly favored. And at the same time, as blessed and highly favored as you are, you still holding on to something somebody did to you 50 years ago. Grudges. Even churches go through storms. We see in the news where churches and the sheriffs show up lock the doors churches go through storms where the members are not on one accord won't work together to promote the kingdom of God churches go through storms but I come to tell you today that no matter what you're going through and no matter what your storm may be today as long as Jesus is with you, I'm here to tell you that everything's going to be all right. Come on, y'all, y'all, y'all act like y'all don't believe that today. Come on, tap your neighbor, tell him everything's going to be all right. As long as you have Jesus, everything's going to be all right he promised never to leave you nor forsake you one of my favorite scriptures is it came to pass it didn't come to stay but it came to pass that storm that trial that problem that setback that unexpected curve in the road it didn't come to stay but it came to pass and if you know that your storm came to pass you ought to lift up your hands and tell God thank you that I'm so glad that trouble don't last always 
No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Trouble don't last always. But you've got to learn how to hang in there and to hold on. King David said, yea, though I walk through the valley. And that lets me know that I'm not going to stay in the valley. I'm going to go through the valley. In Mark's account of this storm, in the fourth chapter, it lets us know that Jesus had been teaching all day long. And at the end of the day, he tells the disciples to get in the boat and to pass over to the other side. They do what the Lord told them to do. But on their way to the other side, doing and going where God told them to do, a storm rose up. And the storm wasn't any ordinary storm. It was a storm with like, like hurricane proportions. And the Bible says the wind is blowing and the waves are beating against the boat and the boat is rocking and water is now filling up the boat that they're in. And the disciples in the boat with Jesus are scared. Have you ever been in a storm and you didn't know what the outcome of it was going to be? And as much church as you have in you, you were afraid. The Bible said they were scared. And because of this storm, they were afraid, they began to cry out. Jesus careth not that we perish. Now let me tell you the reason why they shouldn't have been afraid. They shouldn't have been afraid because, number one, Jesus was on the boat. And not only was Jesus on the boat, he was asleep at the bottom of the boat. And I come to tell somebody today, if Jesus ain't worried, then neither am I. It's the same boat. It's the same wind. It's the same water. It's the same lightning. And Jesus is asleep. And if Jesus is asleep in the midst of that storm, you ought to roll over and go to sleep. He, he ain't worried about it. And if he ain't worried about it, I ain't going to worry, uh, worry about it. Because one day I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my savior. And every now and then when I get in a storm, I have to remember that Jesus is on this boat. And if Jesus is on my boat, I know that he can make a difference in my life. Lord, thank you. The Bible says that Jesus got up from sleep. And talk to winds and talk to waves. And told the winds and the waves, peace, be still. How many know that God can give you peace in the midst of a storm? Come on, come on, don't play with me now. How many know that God can give you peace? You don't know why you so calm. And you don't know why you haven't gone crazy out of your mind yet. Because whenever you go through something, know that God can still give you that kind of peace. Where well, you know that I may be in it right now, but I'm not going to stay in it. And when God gets ready, he's going to bring me out of this. And when he brings me out of this, I'm going to open up my mouth. I'm going to raise my hands. 
and I'm going to tell my God thank you for bringing me out come on shake your neighbor's hand tell him you coming out of this come on come on come on come on if the person sitting next to you won't shake your hand come on find somebody else shake that hand and tell them you are going to come out of this that that was that was the first storm that was the first storm that jesus spoke to the winds and the waves and the winds and the waves hushed and were still and the disciples were saved out of out of that storm now that's the first story but the second story is where the lord had been teaching all day long again he had been teaching all day long and, and now he decides uh, that uh, he's going to feed the multitude. And after feeding the multitude with two fish and five loaves, he tells the disciples to go ahead, get in the boat, go to the other side of the lake while I send the multitude away. And the Bible says that the disciples got in the boat like the Lord said, started going to the other side like the Lord said. And the Bible says that when Jesus sent away the crowd, he went up into the mountain and began to pray. Because every now and then you've got to learn how to pray all by yourself. You're not going to always find somebody to pray with you. You've got to learn how to pray all by yourself. You got to learn how to have a sweet hour of prayer with you and the Lord all by yourself. Because take note, if Jesus had to go pray, you think you can get through this life without praying? The Bible says he was up in the mountain. He was praying all by himself. But when he looked out about three, four o'clock in the morning, there on the lake, and the Bible says he looked out and he saw the disciples struggling. And I come to talk to somebody this morning and you just struggling. Life, life, life can be a struggle. Sometimes when you do the best that you can do, things still happen in your life. And life can be a struggle. And the Bible said they were struggling because the winds were contrary. And every now and then in your life, the winds will be contrary against you. And I don't care how much Bible you know. And I don't care how much you pray. And I don't care how much Bible study you go to. And I don't care how long you've been saved. Every now and then, how many know that life can be contrary? That you've done all that they told you to do and you still didn't get the outcome that you thought that you should get because life can be contrary the Bible says they were going across on the lake and they were facing contrary winds but the good news about it all is that while the winds were contrary Jesus saw them and I want you to know that no matter what you're going through today, Jesus has his eyes on you. He sees you. He knows what you're going through. And every so often, I know I'm guilty of it, but every so often you really start to think that God doesn't care about you. And you feel like he doesn't really understand your situation. And sometimes we have what I call pity parties. Woe is me. Nobody's going through what I'm going through. Well, I come to tell you today that no matter what you're going through, there's somebody else in here right now going through the same thing. You are not alone. And God sees right where you are. 
I'm glad about that because you know, you can't tell everybody everything. And as quiet as it's kept, some people don't even want to know everything you're going through. But I'm glad today that not only does the Lord see me, he knows what I'm going through. Aren't you glad about that? He, he knows what you're going through. There is nothing going on in your life that God doesn't know what you're going through. He saw them. Now, when he first told them to go across the lake, it came to me that nobody really asked Jesus how he was going to get across the lake. Did he have a boat of his own? Was somebody there going to take him across the lake? They never asked him how he was going to get across the lake. But when the disciples got in trouble, look at what Jesus did to get to them. He came to them walking on the water. That lets me know that whenever you get in trouble, you serve a God who knows how to get to you. And he'll do whatever is necessary to make it to where you are. Now, y'all acting like walking on water like you did that yesterday. But the last time I checked, nobody in here has walked on water. Some of y'all can barely swim in water. But he comes to them walking on the water. The Bible says that when they first saw him, they didn't recognize him. And they thought it was a ghost. And that's because he came to them in a way that they were not expecting. And all I want you to know today is that when God blesses you, he's going to bless you in a way that you're not expecting. See, the problem with the good saints is you want to tell God how to bless you. You want to tell him when to bless you, how to bless you. You want to be in control of God. Well, the last time I checked, God hasn't asked for your opinion about anything. And how many know that you can't tell God how to bless you? And because you can't tell God how to bless you, how many of your testimony is today, however God wants to bless me, I'm just going to let him bless me. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. I ain't going to tell you how to do it. I ain't going to tell you when to do it. I just want you to bless me. And any way that you bless me, I believe I'm going to be satisfied with the blessing. You know, we say it, we do church talk, we do church talk. We say, let him have his way. That's church talk, that's church talk. Let him have his way, that's church talk. Let him have his way. That's, that's what we say. And then when God tries to have his way, that ain't the way we like. So we go against what God is trying to do in our life. God is really trying to bless you and the biggest problem you have is you in the way. So you've got to get to a point where you just let God bless you however he wants to bless you. Because how many know that God knows how to bless you today? He knows how to do that today. He, he knows how to bless you. The Bible says, the Bible says they didn't recognize him and they thought it was a ghost and they got scared. And because they were scared, uh, uh, Jesus says to them, don't be scared. Be of good cheer. It's just me. It's just me. Come on. Come on. Tell your neighbor. It's just Jesus. 
it's just Jesus. It's just be of good cheer. It's, it's, it's just me. And the Bible says that when Peter recognized, here goes Peter. Peter recognized it was the Lord. And, and Peter says, well, Lord, if it's you, bid me come walk on the water. And what I like about Jesus' reply is he didn't give the whole speech. He just told Peter, come on. Come. And Peter, the Bible says, begins to get out the boat. And Peter is walking on water. Some of you don't realize that all through your life, as impossible as it is to walk on water, but some of you don't know that in your life, you've gotten this far because God has let you walk on water. You've been walking on stuff you ain't supposed to walk on. You've been making it in stuff you weren't supposed to make it in. Some of the stuff you walking on now, the devil meant to kill you with that stuff. And God wouldn't let the devil kill you, but God gave you power to walk on it. Walk through it. Can, can I get a witness here? Can, can, come on, come on. How many know that God's been letting you walk through water for the longest time? You've been walking on trouble that should have killed you. You've been walking on problems that should have taken you under. People talked about you, scandalized your name, never thought you'd be anything. They killed your self-esteem. But God gave you the power to walk on stuff that should have taken you under. Come on, tell the truth. You got some haters in your life. And they so surprised you still walking on water. They shocked. They shocked that you walking on water. Because you know, the reason they mad now is that every time they look at you, they say to themselves, by now I thought they'd be going under. And instead of going under, you seem to be doing a whole lot better. Oh yeah. <laughs> y'all y'all can sit down. You're making the quiet folk mad. <laughs> Peter began to walk on water. One's supposed to be able to, but he's walking on water. And you know what else? Peter gets a lot of criticism. We say, yeah, Peter, he was walking on water, then he sank. Well, 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 here's the other side of that. Peter is the only one with the testimony that he walked on water like Jesus. <laughs> he only won. At least he got out the boat. And how many know you can't walk on water if you don't get out the boat? And some of y'all will never walk on water because we can't get you out the boat. We can't even throw you out the boat. I don't know about you. I just don't want any ordinary saved life. Same old, same old. See, the same old thing every Sunday. No, but how many know that you want God to do supernatural things in your life? You want God to carry you places you ain't never been before. You want God to show you stuff you ain't never seen before. And the only way to see that, to experience that, is that you have to get out the boat. When Peter began to get, he got out the boat. God bless his heart. He got out the boat. 
the Bible says that while he was out the boat and he was walking on the water, he started looking at other stuff. He began to look at the winds and he could see that the water was boisterous, the Bible says. And he took his eyes off of Jesus. The best advice I can give you as your pastor is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Stop looking at other members. Stop being so critical of everything. But keep your eyes on Jesus. When you come to worship, don't worry about who ain't here. Because as long as God is here, we're going to have church anyhow. Stop looking at folk who don't like you. Always criticizing you. Nobody likes to be criticized. I, I get that. But you've got to understand that no matter what people say about you, it does not matter. All that matters is what God is saying about you. And if God says, I'm going to bless you, then I'm going to bless you. If God says you're going to be blessed in the city, you're going to be blessed in the city. If God says you're going to be blessed in the field, you're going to be blessed in the field. You're going to be blessed going in and blessed coming out. And it does not matter what people say about that. God is the only one that really counts. So, so in here today, if you really want victory in your life, if you want to be an overcomer, if you want God to control your life, Take your eyes off of everything, but keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. God knows what you need, and he knows when you need it. And if you just stay focused, keep your eyes on the Lord, everything's going to be all right. Yes, it is. I'm telling you. It'll be all right. If you've taken your eyes off of him, refocus today. Today is a good day to refocus. Refocus. Don't come to church mad and upset. Refocus. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell him thank you. I know we didn't shout this morning, but that's okay. You got some good advice today. I know in my life, whenever I start get going under, I know it's only because I've taken my eyes off Jesus. When I start getting depressed and I start feeling low and down, it's because I've taken my eyes off Jesus. But this week, the Lord reminded me, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't worry about the supervisor. Don't worry about the job. Don't worry about the finances. Focus in on God. Start worrying about what ain't going right. Focus in on the one who can make it right for you. That's, that's the Lord. This altar call is for those who are going to focus and refocus. And your focus and refocus is on Jesus Christ today. I don't want you to think about what's wrong in your life. 
thing that's right in your life is the thing that matters your relationship with Jesus Christ and if you plan to refocus today or if you plan to keep your eyes on Jesus I want to pray with you I want you to come to the altar right now and I want to pray with you come on you've been looking at the wrong thing you've been looking at the wrong person but today today I'm going to refocus I got to change my attention I've been looking at the wrong stuff whenever you look at the wrong stuff you 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 in for a letdown you'll be depressed you'll be sad and won't even know why you're sad it's because you've taken your eyes off Jesus Lord I wanted to hoop this morning y'all don't know how bad But sometimes, you know, it ain't about the hoop. It's about getting something you can take back home with you. And this morning, this morning, when you leave this altar, I want you to recommit yourself to the Lord. To the Lord. Not to Greater Bethel Church. Not to Pastor Mars Redden Jr. Mm-mm commit yourself to the Lord because the Lord is the only one that can bless you like I know you want to be blessed come on take the hand of the person standing next to you at the end of this story when Peter began to sink at the end of the story he cried out, Lord, save me. And that's a, that's a good prayer too. Lord, save me. Because sometimes the Lord needs to save us from ourselves. He needs to save us some decisions we've made. Peter made the decision to get out there. And now he's going under. Lord save me if you're down today if you're hurting today the prayer is Lord save me and the Bible says that Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter before he went under and I come to tell somebody this morning it's no time to be going under because God, God's got your back. Oh, yes, he does. He's got your back today. And I'm believing, I'm believing that when you refocus, you're going you're gonna to enjoy God more than you've ever enjoyed him. What, what do I need to do? I, I, I need to not be distracted. My mind needs to stop running. I need to calm down and look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm going to look at Jesus. Father, we thank you today. We thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for reminding us that we need you every hour every minute every second of every day God we need you today and God I'm asking that you would help us to refocus help us to look at the right thing put our minds in the right place that we might be all that you want us to be in you. And God, I want to thank you right now. 
because I see your people coming out now. They, some of them were in a pit this morning. But God, you're going to bring them out in the name of Jesus. Because you said in your word, seek ye first the kingdom of God, your kingdom and, and your righteousness. And you said all those other things would be added unto us. So God, help us to put you first. Push some things out of the way. Help us to move some stuff out of the way in order that we might be blessed. In Jesus' name, I just want to thank you. And I just want to praise you because we know that blessings are on the way. Because now we've gotten some things in order. Blessings are on the way. Now, Lord, as we leave this altar, order our steps. Show us what we need to see. And whatever we don't need to see, God, help us to ignore what we don't need to see. Those things that are just not productive. Help us to ignore it. But God, we thanking you right now. Because we know we're going higher. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, hug your neighbor. Hug your neighbor. Tell him.